Hi everyone and welcome to the third part of our tutorial series Type Flow for Arcvis. In this one I would like to show you how you can grow IV and some objects in your scene. So for this let me just go and create the Type Flow and I have just prepared this scene to show you how quick and easy we can do that. Let me go and open the editor. And right here, all we have to do is just right click, go to preset flows, and then select simple IV flow. And here everything is just set up for us so we can start to work with. Let me show you real quick what actually happens. So when I get rid of all the things, what gets created when you use that preset is the tie, is the tie icon here which is the starting point of the emission for the particles. So this is one particle which is getting generated and this tie icon somewhere on its surface and since I just have one single particle I usually go and change it to pivot so it is not changing the place all the time when I'm moving it and stuff. That is the surface it is using and this is defined in this list. So we can go and remove this and then remove this sphere as well and bring in our assets. I separated the assets that I'm going to use from my actual building here. So I have these guys in another layer so it's easier to select them and isolate them if needed. So let me go and select this sculpture here for now and go and add selected. Now there is not much visible but here we see that the IV starts to go and find this target if you wish. But we can move this tie icon a little bit closer to our sculpture here. And when I'm moving it like this and bring that up a little bit, you're going to see it will lose the growth here. And this is because we have to activate IV growth can start inside a surface. By doing that, it will ignore the surface when it starts to grow our IV. So now we go and find a good place for it so it catches most of the parts from that sculpture. That point is not bad here. Then I'll leave it here for now. And now we can go to the settings of our IV. So we can change the age. Let's say we set it to something like 600 or so. Then it grows all over the place. Then we can change speed on which it grows. We can actually increase that if you want to. So let's set it to 0 0.7, 0 0.6, like that. So it's not growing always had here. Spread is pushing it actually away from your object. So when I go and set it to 30, let's say, see it's just, just pushing it away. So that is something you can use. Depends on how wild your scene will be, etc. These are just all the parameters you should really go and play around with. Just tweak it until you have a nice result for your scene. Then we can move on, we can go to the scale and if you change that scale, it is actually the overall scaling. So if I go and set it to 3, everything grows together, which is okay. But we can go and change the size of the leaves separately, anyways. So I'm going to set that back to 1. And we can go down to our, I mean, directions. Clear what it says. We have the branching, so we can increase or decrease it. I'm going to go decrease that for now. So and increasing it. I wouldn't go crazy with it. But the default value is set to 3. 
I would maybe go to four and then just wait and see what happens because that will change dramatically. You see, there is a lot more when you change the depth value. So I'm going to set it back to three for now. And scaling here, that is for the branching. So we're going to leave it because we're going to change that scaling or the diameter of them in a different way anyways. So that what you see here as branches, by the way, these are just the preview. So don't be scared of the look of it. That will change because we're going to use the spline pads and that will smooth out everything. But turning this on while we are setting up everything, that can really bring down your performance. So this is why we're going to use the preview. And this is just display geometry, simple cylinders here. And when you are happy with the results, we're going to switch that on and use that spline pad, which is here, actually, the time spline, and then create our real branches. But for our preview, that is what we're going to use. So and the scaling, when I change it here, it changed that thing. But actually, we can go and change the diameter of it here as well. So when I set that to 1, that is what happens. But we can go and change it individually anyways. Now let me go to our leaves. And here we have the density. Uh, set it to 10 maybe. Now let me go to branching and bring the time to 50 or something. So I don't have so many branches going on. Yeah. Something like this. Then we go to leaves and maybe we're going to go and change the size of the leaves a little bit bigger and bring up the density maybe to 15 and yeah as I say just just play around with the settings until you are happy now let's say this is the one for our uh, sculpture here and we would love to have ivies growing on these pillars or columns as well I wouldn't go and add just another shape into the surface list here because that can slow down things pretty quickly. So what I do in such a case is usually create a new tie flow and then do the same again. So just go to preset flow and then simple IV flow. Go to grow IV, remove the sphere and then pick that pillar and now we have to go to icon number two and move this closer to our pillar here bring it up a little bit and make sure that IV growth can start inside the surface is also selected and let me bring it back to where it should be let's say this is a good place or maybe here. Yeah. Then again, I'm going to go down to IV and then change the age maybe to 600 or something. So it goes up. That needs a little bit more than 600. So 800 maybe. 1,200. Yeah. Then down to the leaves. Bring down density if you wish. And there we have it. Now we can go to a new one, right click, preset, simple IV, and then go to grow again, remove, and then pick this guy. Go to icon number three and move it to the place. So make sure IV growth can start within inside the surface is activated. And then find a good place for this one. And let that grow. Yeah. 
the age of 1200. So, now I can go and do another one for the fluorine. So again, grow, remove, pick this guy, go to icon number four, move it here, and change the parameters. Or I'm going to change actually the surface instead of fluoring. I'm going to pick that guy and then move my icon up to this position. There we go. And then, as I said, just tweak the settings until you are happy with the results and then take it from there. The next thing we should take a look at are the leaves. So here we have some leaves in here, but you can go and remove it and then add your own leaves if you have some. Just add selected and make sure that we set the scaling to the right scaling. So now I am in Typhlo number four, which is that guy up here. So now they are way too big. So we're going to change the scaling here to 50 and the water ID maybe to 30 or something. And then we go to instance material and then turn on inherit from reference. So it will take the materials from the leaf that you are adding here. So in this way, you can really go and create your own leaves and add them into your setup and use those as your own. So let me change them here, remove, then add selected, scale, set it to 50, and maybe to 30 here again. Same thing for number two, remove it, add selected, scale it 50%, and 30 for the variation. So, and here the last one. Remove, add selected, scale, 50, and here 30 again. So, and I forgot to say inherit the material. So, which is what I'm going to do right now. Select leaf and then inherit from reference. Yep. Now it is set for all of them. It should be uh, that one. So, there we go. Let me close this switch to my camera and then bring in all of our assets and render this to see what that looks like. And there we go. So this is what we get as the results right now. Let me zoom in here a little bit. And as you can see, we have the leaves and all the textures and everything. Everything looks good, but we don't have the branches. And for this, we have to go back to our tie flow setups. So just open the editor again, and then turn on spline path, and turn off display geometry. And we're going to do this for all of them. Now when I go back to our render, we will see 
our branching as well. And we can change those diameters right in here. So point it to point 0.3, for example, and then number two as well. So I'm going to set all of them to point 0.3 so they're not that thick. Now we go back to our render. That is what we have as our results. Which is actually looking pretty good. And this is really one of the simplest ways to create ivy and let ivy grow on surfaces you want to. And yeah, try it out, give it a run. And I hope that this tutorial is useful to you. And I'm going to see you in part four very soon. Have a good day. Have a successful time. Bye-bye.